so in terms of personal data means any data right so it it could be a data which can be objective or subjective uh, it can be true or false so it, it it comprises multiple elements generally people have a perception that uh, it's it's usually personal data which has to be what we fill for a bank or uh, generally our phone numbers mobile numbers our email id this is all personal data but uh, beyond that personal data also comprises about uh, 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 objective and subjective statements especially subjective statements which is quite an interesting case scenario right uh, if you if you work for an organization your employers have appraisal systems and part of the appraisal systems you will see your uh, managers giving you some uh, subjective statements isn't it so those subjective statements definitely qualify in terms of your personal data definition right so not necessarily usual attributes but subjective statements uh, a comment about a person uh, in a in a formal uh, space like an organization all these things can definitely constitutes personal data definition and apart from that uh, you can also ha have false statements no, uh, uh, can also fall into this category correct the same example where uh, your uh, manager writes really bad statements about you that you are not punctual you are not uh, 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 hard working blah 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 those statements could be factually wrong isn't it or uh, even a medical diagnosis uh, which can be factually wrong about a person but still that very much constitutes a personal data right so end of the day how do i arrive at what is personal data or not is basis the broad definition that is there so it has to be about a person and that data can be either a directly identified data or identifiable data right so it has to be related to a individual and it can be a direct identified data or identifiable data so we will we will look at this uh, uh, in the next slide but uh, what is important here it can be different types by nature the content can be not necessarily uh, a, 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 a non-technical data. It can be a technology data as well. For example, IP addresses, your cookies, these kind of technology data can also fall in terms of these definitions, right? So uh, an interesting case can be like if you have a dynamic IP address, uh, will, I, will I constitute this as a personal data? So answer is no in general, but uh, ISPs, internet service providers can actually uh, processing this dynamic IPs can still uh, uh, mark it as a personal data processing because they have the capability in terms of reversing that, right? So uh, it could be a professional data about an individual, not necessarily uh, uh, only your personal uh, traits, right? So even working within an organization, the email ID belonging to a person is also a personal data, right? So unless that uh, 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 it's a group email ID or the email ID of a function rather than a person, it's not a personal data. Otherwise, even a professional data that what you converse in an email of an organization or it's about a person uh, uh, email ID in an organization, all this constitutes personal data, right? So what about the format, right? The format is one of the very important uh, change that was brought in the latest version of the DPDP Act, which moved away from non-digital data because of the humongous challenge in terms of applying any obligations and rules uh, uh, with with uh, the digitization uh, being very less, right? Uh, compared to pre-COVID era, at least COVID, uh, COVID has made organization adopt digital uh, digitalization much faster, uh, but the challenge is still quite uh, there, isn't it? So uh, that's where GDPR and DPDP Act uh, uh, differ, where GDPR still includes paper-based uh, personal data, but not every paper-based personal data is part of GDPR. So uh, in, in, uh, in GDPR, there is a specific call out that any personal data, which is part of your uh, structured methodology, for example, a structured filing system, where you have the personal data uh, filling for a bank or a KYC of an insurance or you're filling it for a income tax, wherever it's a formal structure where the document is going to be uh, uh, accounted for, uh, there is an owner to the document, it's protected, the data is going to be digitized or data, data is going to be formally actioned upon and the data will be 
uh, uh, kept uh, part of retention so it's it's a formal structure is there uh, part of a process that those paper assets are included part of gdpr but in india what what the caveat is that uh, unless the uh, any paper is going to be digitized that's excluded in the dpdp act right so that's like if you have any document in a paper format right any contract or anything that you have in a paper format it's by default are excluded from dpdp act unless you scan it or you digitize the document only then dpdp act will come into picture it's basically to improve the adoption because uh, non personal sorry the paper based asset in government sector is mm -hmm. is very difficult to manage i worked four years when i was part of ey ernst and young with government sector specifically implementing information security baselines okay so i have mm -hmm. seen the challenge where predominantly in government offices if we bring personal data covering paper assets the law will 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 face severe challenge where there was a lot of hue and cry in terms of that law will will create lot of bottlenecks that's the reason that they wanted to move away from uh, focusing on the digital data right just to make the better adoption and uh, trying to remove the bottleneck which which could have been a, a, a severe challenge that you would have seen lot of cases where it would have been just for the sake and people are not really catering to personal data in paper format so the data is about individual non personal data is excluded right is again one of the common myth people uh, uh, consider sensitive data as personal data sensitive data has nothing to do with personal data in under personal data there is a category called sensitive personal data that is different sensitive data in general is not personal data for example your organization's balance sheets right your financial statements of an organization they are sensitive nature but they are not personal data end of the day they belong to a non human correct anything that person that belongs to a non human organization data that is not a personal data very very simple right so again what you need to remember is that the the indian law has excluded the 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 personal data that was manifestly released by the individual to the public right so even that is out of scope for the dpdp act or the the data has been released by uh, uh, organizations or government uh, under the requirement of the law for example your data could be uh, 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 will be released by the court okay the court has powers to uh, uh, give a notice and information could be published in the newspaper so a lot of things can actually be done under uh, rule of law right but the law, the the dpdp act gives this clear exemption that you voluntarily release this data in the uh, public forum and you can't expect the law will come and protect your data simple as that right but uh, there is a there is a difference in the gdpr where gdpr does not exclude this gdpr says that if the data is released then organization can use this data but still you need to follow your obligations that's where the the law is little different where in gdpr it says you are free to use this data because it's been released by the data subject themselves but there are two things which you need to be very careful one you need to know that it was actually released by the data subject themselves you should not be an under an impression assuming that it was released by the data subject right that's one of the important instructions second if you intend to use this publicly available information you need to still reach out to the data subject within 30 days or uh, in at the first communication to make them understand that you are processing this data which is available in a public forum so there's a big difference in terms of that versus the dpdp act which which says it calls it completely removes out what information has been made public by the data subjects so again this is going to be an area of dispute where most of our information is already available in public uh, not done by us we never voluntarily disclose this but uh, uh, it has been uh, because of data breaches or uh, a lot of casual stuff which has happened for a long time so that has resulted most of our data being available in public forum so that cleansing has to happen 
uh, uh, ring fencing has to happen in terms of making organization accountable and uh, that's again one of the area which could be disputed as well so the de the definition says data which are identified and identifiable right so there are concepts where you can directly identify a person and uh, there are situations where you cannot identify a person directly but you have to combine attributes right uh, so for example if i say attributes like blood group or if i give you examples of your height weight age these attributes on a standalone basis may not be able to generally identify a person but uh, these attributes when get combined they can uh, identify a person uniquely right so generally your biometric data has the capability in terms of uniquely identifying a person right so it could be your fingerprint it could be your retina and also information that are contained in a passport your driving license right so most of this information can lead you to be uniquely identify a person even your email id or phone numbers are usually associated with a single person and that if you have the relevant resource to uh, key in that data and identify the person then in these cases they become what we call it as a pii which is personally identifiable information correct so that uh, generally what happens with data privacy laws is that they try to define this at a very high level saying that both identified as well as identifiable personal data which means which are identified uh, uh, stra uh, straight away which are like your uh, biometric data but there are attributes like your age blood group on a standalone basis may not identify you but on a combinational effect they will be able to identify you correct so that is also included by the definition of the law and uh, finally it has to be related about an individual it's very simple so if it's not related to an individual then obviously it's not a personal data so that is where we try to work with our anonymization and pseudonymization concept where we try to break this important chain of relation to a data right if we break this relation then we uh, try to make them as anonymous or pseudonymous data of course i'm going to explain you what is pseudonymization and anonymization uh, in the next session when we start all right